Okay, we're now live. I want to uh, welcome all the uh, everybody to Applause Boot Camp. Like always, we're going to give YouTube a few minutes to go out and notify everybody to let them know that we are live. Uh, today, we're going to have a special guest. We got Mr. Gabe here from Washer Dryer Money. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about the flipping appliance business, and he's going to go ahead and tell us some stuff about the flipping appliance business. And you can call in if you got questions about the flipping appliance business. Uh, today, I want to tell everybody thank you for all the birthday wishes. Uh, uh, made me feel really special. Uh, today is my birthday. Uh, my wife and I celebrated yesterday, so I got the uh, pass to be out here tonight. Uh, also, if you hadn't already, you can go and choose your actual dates for the actual hands-on live event, the new hands-on live event. We starting it back in January. Uh, I was hoping that, <laughs> that the election and, and the president stuff would have been over with by now, but it looks like we probably won't know who the president is and <laughs> For a while, so I don't want anything. I, don't, I I just say I'm gonna wait to the beginning of the year. I'm gonna give them this year, so we're gonna wait to the beginning of the year. Like they found a, uh, it's uh, funny. Like they don't found a, a a vaccine for the COVID now, so uh, maybe maybe we'll get out of this COVID stuff. But I'm just gonna wait to the beginning of the year to actually start the classes back. So if you can go online and you can uh, purchase the appliance boot camp, and you can actually if you get the hands-on live event, you can choose the actual time and dates you would like to come in. But well, once again, uh, we got a special guest in the house tonight. We got Mr. Gabe Easterlin uh, with Washer and Dry Money, and uh, right now uh, he's he's made quite a quite a splash in the appliance uh, appliance world. Um, he called in and told us that he's actually flipped enough appliances where he's been able to retire, been able to pay cash for some houses and uh, some got. Some, I saw him just putting the. The trailer, putting the deck on the back of the trailer now, getting ready to get that rented out. And uh, so we're going to ask him how he got his start here in the uh, uh, in the uh, appliance flipping business. So, hey, how you doing, Gabe? Man, thanks for joining us. Hey, man, doing well, doing well. Happy birthday. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah, I turned the big 48. I got two more years, and then uh, maybe I can retire in two more years. Join you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, how did you get into the uh, appliance flipping business? I was buying storage auctions with my brother and we started getting, we had a little storefront, a lot of washers and dryers and some appliances and stuff would show up in there. And we determined right off the bat, washers and dryers would sell quickly whenever we get them. And then I started buying from a guy on the coast that was selling uh, truckloads at a time, supposedly working, but like <laughs> yeah, yeah. about one out of five or so would have a little problem. He had a lid switch. Something simple would be wrong. Well, it'd be, it'd be working in his opinion. It would, I did do a little bit of work on them. And then with that shop didn't work out. We closed down and it was a lot of hard feelings and like what happens. And I went on vacation and thought it through. And the one thing I remember writing down on the list, what did I learn from this failure? And one of the big things on top was, man, washer and dryers make a lot of money. <laughs> and after that, I was like, well, how, when I got home, I just started focusing on buying washers and dryers. I was buying them, flipping them on, on Facebook, a mm -hmm. Craigslist back then. Mm -hmm. And I'd go to the coast, I'd pick them up, I'd drive them back. I'd go into Hattiesburg, I'd pick them up, I'd drive them to my house. And then I started just focusing on buying broken ones. And that's when Craigslist will let you do anything. I would put yeah. three ads a day on saying, I buy broken washers and, and dryers, $20 cash today. And I would just, I picked up tons. I got scrapper guys, which those, that's your number one. Mm -hmm. You got to be good to your scrappers. Everyone always gets them and then you'll hear them say, I don't know where those guys are. I know where they're. I call them, <laughs> I talk to them. Uh -huh. They're my friends. They're, I mean, you got to be good to those guys. They'll bring you stuff and drop them off at your shop. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you say the coast, I'm thinking the East Coast. You're talking going down to the Gulf? Yeah, uh, Gulfport area. Okay, because uh, where, where are you at right now? What, what city or uh, state? Uh, South in? Mississippi, Hattiesburg. It's a college town. Okay. Now, when you go there, were you buying them off the, uh, off the ship or there's like a, a dock or something? I would buy because the Craigslist in, on the coast was three cities combined. And it was a really big Craigslist compared to one Hattiesburg had. 
And when I went down there, I went to buy and I would just go around buying anybody that said they had broken washers and dryers or just had a good deal on washer and dryers. Mm -hmm. I'd go down there for the day and I would just wake up in the morning, buy as much as I could, bring it back to my shop. I tried that just for a little while. That's a harder way to make money. And mm -hmm. then I started running ads and I put out yard signs and I put signs on the side of my truck saying I buy broken washers and dryers. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it, it just became a couple scrappers that would bring me a few things a week. Mm -hmm. And then trade-ins, I figured out about trade-ins mm -hmm. and like I push, anyone that watches anybody videos, you know, uh, I got tons of videos talking about push that trade-in, mm -hmm. like don't sell sets because people that want a set don't have a washer and dryer to start with, but people yeah. that need a washer <laughs> or a dryer, they got a broken dryer or a broken washer and I push hard. I push hard to get that trade-in. Mm -hmm. When you say trade-in, uh, can you explain what you mean by the trade-in? So if they have a broken washer or dryer, I tell them I'll knock $20 off if they bring it to me or I'll do free delivery. Mm -hmm. So I go there, I pick up their broken one, deliver the new or the one that I refurbed and take it off with me. So it's literally like unlimited inventory. Mm -hmm. I dropped off one, I picked up one, dropped off one, picked up one. And like, I get a lot of trade-ins. When they get on the phone, that's the, before I talk about my inventory, they know how my trade-in program works. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, that's great. Now, did you have any formal training on how to repair washers and dryers? How do you how do you learn how to uh, repair? YouTube University, 100%. That's I everybody. took a course at the very beginning. I have no idea where the course, I've looked for it before and I can't find it. I don't think it's around anymore. Mm -hmm. It was 80 bucks and it was just a guy that showed how to work on a filter out the top dryer and a direct drive washer. That's all he showed how to work on. <laughs> um, and he, it was, uh, I would not say that that's the reason that I got into it because it was very limited amount of information, mm -hmm. but, uh, definitely uh, those, the ones I focused on in the beginning, because I got really, really good at fixing direct drives and filter mm -hmm. out the tops, mm -hmm. but dryers are fairly similar and, you know, it's a turn and drum of heat. It's not that complicated. Mm -hmm. Washers get a little more complicated. There's a few that I avoid just because mm -hmm. the parts are expensive usually. Right. But for the most part, if it's a dryer, I can fix it. If it's a washer and it's not a direct drive or a Paul's play, yeah, 50-50 chance I'm going to fix it. I'll definitely test it to see what it's doing. Mm -hmm. But especially like front-end loaders, I still to this day I avoid front-end loaders like crazy. All my scrappers know not to bring me them. <laughs> yeah, uh, when I used to flip them. We stayed away from them because something could go wrong. And you, you, if you warranty it, your whole, your whole money and everything is gone on a control board or something or a tub baron. Yeah, we stayed away from those too. Yeah, they're now, heavy uh, too. You want to go back and pick up one of those things? Those suckers weigh a ton. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, what kind of demographics are you in? Are you uh, are you in a huge town or are you in a small rural area? Now, I think Hattiesburg has 57,000 people. I believe that's right. So not gigantic. Mm -hmm. uh, less than Jackson. Way less than Jackson. How far are you from Jackson? Maybe an uh, hour and 30 minutes, hour and oh, 40 minutes. Okay. All right. Now, is it, this a fluent area where people got a lot of money or is it just a, a working class area? It's pretty working class. There's a lot of, uh, there's three colleges here. So there's some college students. I do a lot of parents will pay for a machine for me to mm -hmm. deliver to their kids. That happens a lot. But a lot of times it's just, you know, definitely the, my main customer is definitely not wealthy by any means. All right. Okay. Uh, now, are you doing this full time or do you have a, another job to supplement that you just use this to supplement? I also have a, a moving company that that company I've slowed down a lot with because the physical aspect of it is getting a little too much for my age now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we rent labor. So uh, mm -hmm. we rent out two man crews mm -hmm. to load and unload truck. We're, we're a lot like two men in a truck if they didn't have a truck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's good um, side. That's a good side money business too. I just, uh, it's backbreaking. It's a, it compared to anything else. And washer and dryers was always better money. But if someone calls me and wants me to move them and, you know, I'm looking at moving them and making a thousand bucks, I'm not going to turn the job down, but I'm not advertising anymore for it. We haven't advertised for that business in two years. How far do y'all move them? A lot. 90 over 90% of our jobs are just loading or unloading trucks. So we're either loading them up and they're leaving town or okay. we're unloading them. So okay, we, we okay. just send okay. labor out. There's literally no cost. And like, as far as expenses go, it's mm -hmm. 
the gas to get out there when we have a dolly and like that's pretty much it and, and they have the tractor trailer there and y'all just load it up and, and they go uh, unload it and put it where they tell you to go okay yeah, yeah okay yeah we go. pretty much charge 100 bucks an hour for a, a, a two-man crew okay that ain't bad that ain't bad yeah it's good side money it really is you know if someone calls you and need to do a four-hour job and you're not doing anything it's like eh, is it worth it what's the heavy i always ask them that what's the heaviest thing you got <laughs> <laughs> they say piano i said somewhere else <laughs> uh-huh there you go good stuff all right um now uh how did, you told us how you get your inventory you you do like the swap uh where you uh the haul away or you say the trade in uh that's how you get your inventory now how do you price your product uh, I've done it long enough in my area. I, this is so different from area to area. Uh, newer stuff, newer, like a newer dryer, if it's a couple years old, will be like in the 210 to 220 range. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much hitting a, a wall there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd never dr price a dryer under 160 anymore. I used mm -hmm. to have my bottle in, in being like 120, but I've slowly bumped that up over the years and like, mm -hmm. um, if it's a working dryer, it's going to sell for at least 160. Mm -hmm. um, washers, a uh, regular washer, like a direct drive or a Paul's play, will be the 200 range and then up to 250. Okay. That's but true. that's so different from area to area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when we used to sell, um, I, I, could, I, could, I could see the customer. If I had somebody who was coming from the golf course, um, the direct drive washer, I could sell them a direct drive for almost 350. Cause I would tell them, I say, uh, you know, it fills all the way up with water. Uh, the government has outlawed it because uh, because they want you to have the computer board. It doesn't have a computer, and they'd be like, "Man, why they do that? The government in my business. Give me two of them, <laughs> so I can sell those quick." So uh, I used to love those direct drives, man. I made I made my bread and butter off of those. I love them. Yeah, they're getting rare, but I still get them. Like uh, I might get more Paul's play than I do direct drives now, but just recently I, I get so many direct drives. It's so easy. To, I'm going to work on one for a, a lady tomorrow. That's a direct drive. She has runs a uh, dog grooming place. Uh -huh. She's always calling me and always knocking those clutches out. They last her about a year, but uh -huh. so quick 75, but I can knock a clutch out in about 20 minutes. There you go. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Uh, I remember when, uh, when he's saying Paul's play, He's talking about the VWMs, the one way left, right, right, left to put in a diagnostic mode. Um, saying, uh, I remember when they first came out, I used to hate them. Um, but after you learn how to work on them, I found out they, I, I like them just as much as the direct drives. Once I, They're uh, easy. Really, yeah. It's the same problem. It's always, it's either suspension or it's the uh, actuator. That's 90% uh -huh. of the problems. There you go. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, now you're going to retirement mode. <laughs> you you have flipped enough washers and dryers that you're looking to get out the business now. If I, yeah. uh, if I recall, I'm at I'm I'm under contract, so I'm not going to talk too much about the house. But the house that I'm <laughs> under contract with right now will put me at 15 doors. 15 doors. Oh man, yeah, uh, how, and how, it's, how, it's an amazing. Like I feel like God has really blessed me in my life. Like this house, it's one of those. As growing up as a poor kid, like. Yeah you look at those rich people houses and all of a sudden, like, this is crazy. It's got that light that lights up the house itself. It has a pool, a pool house. Like, it's the <laughs> craziest, craziest thing. I, I keep pulling up there to inspect the house. And once in a while, I was like, it doesn't feel real. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Cause I've done that. I, I ran my mouth and not thinking people looking, I messed the deal up, but yeah. And when you get it, uh, wait till you get it in your pocket and then, then i uh, put it out there. But that's yeah. great. That's great. So yeah, you it's have got a pool house that I'm going to rent out. I already got a renter for the pool house. It's going to pay half the mortgage. <laughs> well, I always go. got something going on. I'm not paying full price for nothing. <laughs> now, have you always been an entrepreneur? I have. I failed a whole lot until I was pretty much in my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. uh, I met my that back then my girlfriend, and it was one of those uh, we had just failed pretty hard at another business, <laughs> and uh, I didn't have money to take her out, and I got super frustrated with it, and uh, really started getting into personal finance books, uh -huh. videos. And then all of a sudden I just realized what my problem was. And it's crazy. Like, and no one's the same. Everyone has different problems. Mine was time management. Mm -hmm. My time, I, I, I would not focus every day 
on the same exact number one task. And when I started, I read a book. It was uh, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Yeah, yeah. Eat That Frog. And, Do the worst thing first. Get it out the way. Yep. Yeah, that was 100%. That book changed my life. Mm -hmm. Everything changed after that. I started writing down my to-do list. Before I went to bed, I have a note card. I still do that to this day. I have a note card and I write down my to-do list and I, I letter it A, B, and C. <laughs> you know, there you go. Yeah, you know, I, I have to do the same thing. And, and put Man, that. it's crazy. When you do that, when I don't, when I get up, fall out of the high bed every once in a while, you can see it in your profit. Like you'll look, go back and be like, how much did I make this month? What month was I not doing my to-do list? Like it, it comes down to it, it haunts you. That to-do uh -huh. list haunts you. Yeah. You got to do the same thing every day. No exceptions. The same thing. And yeah. it's funny. Um, like you just talked about Eat That, uh, Eat that Frog by Brian Tracy. It's funny. Uh, I was telling people about entrepreneurs. You, when you start, people automatically assume if you're an entrepreneur that you've read that book and you, you know that. Because uh, uh, I've been telling, um, telling a lot of alumni, you have to get into reading and self-educating yourself uh, because uh, that, that's the only way you're going to learn. And uh, entrepreneurs going to automatically uh, assume that you already know those basic books that everybody has read. Yeah, and no book, you can't, that's a hard thing about book recommendation. You don't know what book is going to affect you. But one day, if you just keep reading and keep reading, Audible, get on Audible, keep listening while you're driving in the car, one day you're going to come across a book and it will it will just stop you in your track. You'll want to pull over or you'll be rewinding it. But Eat That Frog was that way to me. I, I compulsively read that book. When it hit me, did I realize what my problem was? I was like, oh man, all this time. I've been, it was all time management. It was just that. It was so simple. Mm -hmm. But Great you don't know. Through. You got to read everything and you got to, you got to, eventually one of those things will hit you. Yeah. Now, did you, uh, did you go to any type of university or anything after, after high school? God, no, I was homeschooled and I barely made it through. <laughs> <laughs> my mama nearly failed me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where did the entrepreneur book come from? Uh, my dad. My dad was a big entrepreneur. He did a medical equipment company when I was growing up, uh, uh, cabin rental businesses. Uh, like, definitely, like, I never, when I was younger, too, I, I had some reading problems, and I'm over all that now. But, like, I originally, remember, I remember thinking that I, I wasn't smart enough to go to college. That I needed uh -huh. to figure out how to do this entrepreneur thing. But thank God I didn't. I look at my <laughs> friends that went to college, and, like, some of them are in such deep debt. And they're Man. doing nothing to do with their degree. Nothing to do with their degree. Yeah, it's crazy. Do they do they know how well you're doing? Uh, are they still don't they still don't quite grasp how well you're doing? Not all of them. Not all of them. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll see one of my old friends. And we'll talk about things, and uh, it'll be brought up what I'm doing. And like my main business now is it actually is rental property. And it's like uh -huh. when I bring up that, oh yeah, you got some rentals. Like yeah, I got a couple. So yeah, they have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> that is wild man I, I love this i love this now how about your uh your uh your girlfriend then but it's your wife now correct yes uh, uh the, the ride with a serial entrepreneur can, can be a roller coaster ride from time to time because i'm always doing something different it's not like you're doing the same thing how does your wife uh handles that now with you always um finding other things to do She's super supportive. I, I think that's one of the keys to why I'm successful at all is my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not pulling the same direction, mm -hmm. uh, if you're fighting with your spouse and you're like, that's the number one problem you need to start working on immediately. Mm -hmm. But my wife has always helped uh, during the whole, I will say it out loud because you know, YouTube don't like it, but during know, the whole yeah. sickness thing, <laughs> during the sickness, I decided to take her out of work because a couple of her employees got it. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. It was back when everyone was really didn't know if you uh -huh. make it kind of a thing, that's the time. And you know, we, we were fine, but she immediately came home and she was cleaning washers and dryers and painting <laughs> washers and dryers. Uh -huh. She'd stay home and someone pull up to the driveway, she'd sell it to them. And like, she, she's, she's a hundred percent on board. That is great. That is great. Um, so you, you never worked for anybody. You always been an entrepreneur. So you don't know what it is to actually have a boss. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I couldn't boss. My wife has. She was a uh, server for a steakhouse. Uh huh. So uh -huh. she has, but I don't think I could. Honestly, I'm not. Uh, I I have enough problems with whenever I do a move job and I have like a semi boss for a couple hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that that's 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 great. Now. Um, 
Now, now you uh, going from business to business. Now, what venture is this your own now? Uh, with your uh, real estate, this like your like your third or fourth uh, year? Uh, no, uh, uh, business that you're done that you have done. Oh God, I have failed out a whole lot. Um, yeah, maybe like maybe my tenth if you count all the little tiny ones. Uh, I, I failed a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing is like whenever you find a business that works, you know it, mm-hmm. and you just like I when when I start when. When we did the moving company, especially in the beginning, we made three hundred dollars in one day. And I was like, "Whoa!" And we went out and advertised like crazy for that. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the washer and dryer thing. When I realized that I could get somebody to bring me a broken washer and dryer, I could fix it mm-hmm. and I could sell it, and I could do it several times in one day. Mm-hmm. It was like I just met, I destroy those kind of businesses because I just <laughs> see where is the limit here? How long can I stay awake? Mm-hmm. How long can I sell? And I, I remember I used to my goal every day was to fix several sets. It was always two to three sets a day I would try to fix. Uh That's when I was like killing myself in the beginning. But uh, it's what businesses are weird. You don't know what's going to work. You don't know what's going to work until you try it. And you also may hate it. So Mm -hmm. you want to try several things. I like the moving company. I hate it. I despise the moving company (laughs) with a true passion. I don't Uh like moving people's stuff anymore, but it was good money in the beginning appliance thing is better but honestly I'm, I'm getting super burned out on it and and my real estate thing is it's weird i've never i've heard of people being full-time real estate and i never thought i'd be one of them but like <laughs> i can literally after you do one or two houses it's hard the first one uh-huh. and then the second one's easier when you get to like five and six <laughs> it gets so easy to get find the money it's get so easy like it's no longer can I get that house? It's, is it the best deal? All I have to do now is find the best deal. I can get the money to get The money's no <laughs> longer a problem anymore. You, you just, you just learn how to find different ways of getting the money and different ways of financing things. If you need to finance it, uh, use my HELOC and those kind of tricks and like everything just gets easier with, with this. And I love flipping houses. Like, I know you do it too. It's uh-huh. something about like when I fall asleep at night, I think about all those people. They're also falling asleep in my houses. This is a crazy <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm, I'm in the real estate now myself. And just like you, uh, I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten burned out. The uh, plans business has been so good to me, but God knows. Uh, some people ask me, because I'm going to ask you this too. If, if it's working for you and you making money, why not go deeper into it, uh, to the flipping the plans business? Why are you going to go now and go to real estate? Uh, why not just keep going and, and diving deeper into the appliance flipping? Um, when you start making passive income, it's the most addictive thing <laughs> that you'll ever get into. I remember the first time I, had, I got a rental trailer, my first rental. I put it all together myself, everything but the septic tank. They wouldn't let me do that. I put everything else together myself and she handed me $600 and I thought, Oh, well, okay. I made $600. That's not a big deal. The next month went by, she gave me another 600. I remember thinking, Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) One more month went by and it blew my mind. Like something just clicked in me. I was like, Oh, forever. (laughs) Forever. She's going to give me 600. I will always until until this thing just disintegrates. I'm going to make 600 and after you make passive income, the first of the month rolls around so quick. <laughs> it's just all, rents always feels like it's about to become due. When you get halfway through the month, it's like, ooh, rent's due in two weeks. <laughs> and after you get, I don't know, it's just exciting. Real estate, it builds so quickly too. It's so crazy to think like in 2013, I had my first, towards the end too, mm-hmm. first rental. And now, like I'm getting with this place, it'll be two more, but right now 13, something like that, yeah, 13. And one year, last year we did, before all this stuff started happening, we did four in one year. Four oh, wow. properties in <laughs> one year. And it was really frustrating, but really fun too, getting that, tearing things out, redoing stuff, making it the way you want to look. And I don't know, with appliance, it's great. And I would never, like, I, I, I thank the appliance business tremendously. It, yeah. it got me the money to start off with, but real estate, it develops its own wings. 
all of a sudden you're just it's it's automatic when you get to four or five you'll see what i mean it's like it's just like oh here's another someone brought me a deal let me, let me go check this thing out uh-huh. <laughs> and it just become everything gets easier with real estate it gets easier and easier and like when i say retire like i want to only do maybe a house or two a year and like that sounds like a lot of work but like it's that would be actually easier than last year and yeah that's just all I do. Like I'd be super happy. And honestly, if nothing else, if I did nothing else, the passive income I'm making right now is more than twice what my expenses are. Like you, I could just sit on the couch and be fine. I don't want to do that, but I could just sit on the couch and be fine. And it's life changing. It's one of those two. My, my grandmother passed away this year and I've had a lot of realizations of how mortal I am and everyone else is and like Mm -hmm. you don't you're not getting younger all Mm -hmm. those things you wanted to do you better do them now and I feel like I'm in in such a unique position that I I could just travel a little bit you know maybe a little more traveling that I go to where I want to go and do those things I want to do because eventually you're going to get older and you're not going to be able to hike those places you wanted to hike go to those places that would be less expensive if you did it now versus when you do it in your 60s and 70s like I if I have the choice, I'd much rather take some, like uh, the Tim Ferriss thing, take some mini retirements. Yes, every yes. Year. And, and that, that's the thing right now that's really tugging at me because uh, I'm saying the same thing. Right now, my passive income is enough that my wife and I could be anywhere. And I tell her, I said, man, uh, we could be anywhere. Why are we stuck in Clayton? <laughs> let's let's, take a, uh, uh, let's take, uh, take a break for six months and go somewhere else. So, um she, we, I can't, we came to agreement. My, uh, our last child's graduating in May. So when she graduates, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take us a, a, a mini vacation someplace and go stay. But I wish we had done it earlier while the kids were still in uh, high school. When the kids wanted to hang out with us, I wish we could have went out to another country and live for maybe about a year. Um, uh, that would have been great, but Maybe I have to look for my grandkids to uh, actually do that well. <laughs> yeah, you should. I don't know if you like Japan, but I went to Japan for a month uh, a couple of years ago, 2016, and it was nowhere near. I did it super cheap. Like I rented an Airbnb. One of my Airbnbs was twenty four dollars a night. Oh wow! And I didn't spend much money at all. My plane ticket I got super cheap on sale. I bought months ahead of time. But it that was one of the things I think when you go far enough away, when you call home. And it's dark. <laughs> it, it's it's it will mess with your brain. And if you're you have to be gone away from your business long enough that you want to go home. And all <laughs> of a sudden, it that I remember when I took that trip to Japan, it changed so much of my thinking. I started thinking back home. If I did this, this, and this, I should be doing these things so I can get to where I could do this more. Uh-huh. That was. It, but you have to be, it's, it's a weird idea. It's a weird concept, but you have to go, you can't just take a vacation one town over and for one week. Uh-huh. You've got to go far enough away and stay gone long enough mm-hmm. that your brain starts thinking about what you were doing wrong back home. Oh, uh-huh. I never thought about that. Maybe I, that, that's a great idea uh, to go there to, uh, to re, to, so I can, I, I can detox and really think about my business and come back prepared and, and appreciate it a lot more. Yeah, because right now you're just right here. You're you're too you're too close to your business. Yeah. When you move far enough, when you go to a, a country that's far enough away that is dark, whatever country you pick, uh-huh. it's dark there and it's light here. And you call home and you have to think about what time to call. <laughs> and like it, the whole thing will will change your thinking. Not week one or two, but around week three when you start getting the itch to come home resist it and just stay gone for a little longer, uh-huh. and your brain will just open up and all of a sudden you'll have all the you'll you'll realize what you're doing all this work for. Oh, wow. That's good stuff, Gabe. I'm writing that down. <laughs> that can be my, that my selling Oh, point. I love Japan <laughs> now. If you never thought about going to Japan, it's, uh, it's absolutely a, a crazy, awesome country. Wow, okay. Now, what made you choose Japan? I took karate for a while when I was a kid, and I always wanted to go. And I met a goal, savings goal, and a at that time in 2016, I can't remember how many houses it was, but I met my real estate goal too. And I was like, Oh, well, I met my savings goal, met this. And my reward for it was take a month off and go to Japan, which when you originally write those kind of things down, they seem ridiculous. But when you (laughs) achieve them, like you kind of feel like you have to do it, or you lied to yourself. Uh Uh-huh. 
Now, uh, the first time where you was able to save up and, and pay for that house and get it get it repaired and 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 and, and get somebody in there, uh, do you remember? Uh, like with me, I remember when I first looked at it, it was like this big task that I had. I thought one time I had taken off too much, been off more than I can chew. But I just put my head down, start working. And then I looked up and I was done. And I couldn't remember none of the hard work that I had went through and none of the headaches. It was, it was like it just happened overnight. Did you experience that too? I do, especially the four houses that we did last uh -huh. year. We uh -huh. worked so long that I look back every once in a while. I was like, oh, I forgot we, we re-plumbed all. I forgot we did this. I forgot about that termite <laughs> damage. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, it's weird also to think when after you've had a house for half a decade uh -huh. that I can't really remember what I did with my first rental. I know I did a lot, but like, <laughs> You're, I'm still getting, that's the weird thing about rental property. Uh, I still get paid for that work I did. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. It's super strange. It's not like washer and dryer where you did the work, you got the money and game over, that's it. It'd be as if they were renting the washer from you. You just get money every month and you don't remember fixing it anymore. It, it's a weird concept. Uh, but you, that's another thing too. You always flip, uh, uh, you, you say you had a storefront for a short period of time, but you made uh, the bulk of your money flipping right out your backyard, right? Uh, no, my the bulk of the money I made was with a consignment shop. So I started, okay. I had a storefront that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And then I did it from my house and that did work out. I saved a lot of money doing that. Mm -hmm. But then I discovered a consignment shop that was taking 10% and the booth rent was $50 a month for a 10 by 10. And I got most of my stuff in a 10 by 10. Later, I got a, a slightly bigger uh, booth for just a little bit more money than that. Mm -hmm. And I was able to fit several sets. I didn't, I actually found it was worse to have too many up there. When you give people too many choices, I, I, uh -huh. things didn't sell it fast. But when there were only four sets at a time up there, they sold a lot faster. Okay. All right. We got our first caller. 909, you're on. 909, you're on. Is this a uh, hello, Moan? Hello? Hello. This is Mike, Appliance Boot Camp. You're on. Oh, I'm on. Um, I just got a question. I'm a big fan of appliance boot camp. And um, I got one question is, how would a person get experience um, when the whole pandemic situation is? I got some ideas on how to do that, but just your feedback. As well as I remember you mentioned about um, the, the participation with what you guys doing. Have you thought about like the Virgin Galactic by Richard Branson, how he's taking participants from Mars and back? It's like a two or three hour commute. It's like a bit of a bucket list I want to do. Have you thought about that yourself? Have I ever thought about going to Mars? <laughs> no, it, I, it, it's like a bit of a bucket list that I want to do. Um, where basically, I don't know if you heard about Richard Branson with Virgin Galactic, where basically yeah. they take P -P -P people from here to Mars and back. It's like a two hour, I mean, two to three hour wide to do that. I mean, it's, it's fairly expensive now. Uh, it's $250,000, but once they know how to use the re reusable rockets, they, they, they'd be a cheaper price of two hundred. dollars to hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it's something I'll be seriously want to do probably like now, five or ten years from now, as far as a long term goal. Okay, yeah, I don't. If that's on your bucket list. I don't. I don't see nothing wrong with that. That's not. I'll be honest, not on my bucket list right now. Uh, <laughs> but but to get into uh, the other part, if you want to get, you talking about get experience into the appliance repair field. Yeah, I, I do got digital marketing experience. Mm -hmm. um, that I background with. So I was thinking about reaching out to veterans locally around here to work on their uh, PPC or SEO, Google SEO work in exchange. Like I'm your apprenticeship or when I, I was available or weekends and, and just build from there. Uh, I, I just take the course and, and go start your own business. Uh, wash repairing appliances. really is not that hard. Uh, take the course. It'll give you a good foundation of how all, all the appliances work. And just start fixing one or two appliances uh, per uh, per day, and and, and self educate yourself. Uh, Gabe, did you you take any course? Or <laughs> you just went out there and looked at YouTube and just went at it, right? Most of it was YouTube. Yeah, just watch YouTube. Get some appliances and just set a goal. Just what you said. In the, when I first started off, what my goal was fix one a day, get one a day. Fix mm -hmm. one a day, get one a day. And then I bumped it up from there. So just start off with something that's uh, that's a stretch for you. 
And I would say that'd probably be a good stretch, fix in one a day. And then it's not overwhelming too. And just right. whenever you find a problem, look up the type of machine, look up the problem, watch several videos on it. And, uh, and you take the boot camp course, obviously. Like I wish appliance boot camp was around in 2012. It would have been a lot <laughs> easier on me. A lot. YouTube University is nice, but like having someone just break it down in front of you, uh, much easier. Okay, we'll, we'll do. My situation is different because I live in an apartment for right now. And it's just like, should I get a storage and just get like the used beat up refrigerator? or wash There's a lot of people do that around me. There's two guys that do that around me. They rent uh, storage units with power and water. They do exist. You do have to beat around and find where they are. And but uh, usually it'll be like, you know, for a company or something, but you have to make sure they have 220 there, not just the regular 110 outlet. And uh, right. there's several people that do that around me. And these, you know, it's, it's kind of a J-O-B. You have to kind of leave your house and go all the way out to your storage unit. It's much better to have, a, especially a flipping, to be able to walk outside your house and start doing it. But uh, yeah. definitely to start off with, I'd look into it. Look, look at all, call the storage units around you and see if any of them offer any of that. All right, absolutely. Thanks for the uh, feedback, fellas. As well as Gabe, have you ever thought about the, uh, the Virgin Galactic thing with Richard, Richard Branch is doing as well? I haven't heard of it, but I mean, it sounds interesting. I've heard this before. Um, people underestimate what they can do in one year. And, or no, the other way around, overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10. So I, honestly, if you're just needing 250000 uh, depending on how far out your goal is, I think that's 100% possible. Yeah, it's like five or eight, five or eight years or 10 years away from doing it because what he, basically what he's doing is is he set it up where where two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and he has like a waiting list of people already ready to go. But basically, he takes them from here to Mars and back. It's like a two hour, two three hour process to do that for two hundred fifty thousand. That's like a, a bucket list long term goal I want to do as well. Okay. Hey, in ten years down the road, you get this, you could be you can make a lot of money, especially if you earn more, you spend less, and you invest the difference. You can do whatever you want to. That's the secret to being wealthy. There's no, it's not, it's not a big secret, but like, that's it. You want to make more money. You want to have the money in 10 years, earn more. Don't expand your lifestyle. Spend less. Go backwards from what you ought to do. Spend, cut some of your bills down, anything you can, and invest the difference, whether it's in real estate or stocks or whatever you want to get into. I recommend real estate, but anything... You. If you invest in anything, you do that for 10 years, you'll have all the money you want to. Correct. Well, thanks for the feedback. Thanks, uh, fellas. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Okay, Later. thank you. Bye. Now, uh, Gabe, uh, do you subscribe any to Dave Ramsey or you, you kind of Dave Ramsey till you could rally? Uh, they say you're supposed to Dave Ramsey till you can Robert Kiyosaki uh, or you kind of play both of them. I absolutely believe you can. You de you should definitely Dave Ramsey until you Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. Uh, and in the beginning, I pay all my properties were free and clear. Mm -hmm. Only recently have I started taking on debt, and it's mm -hmm. because it's a very small percentage of my total net worth. Mm -hmm. So if if you are you know if you tell me I, I've got a million dollars in rental property and you owe a million dollars. That ain't good. <laughs> right. But if you tell me you uh, have a million dollars in rental property and you you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt, uh, that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And just recently, like right now, I'm I'll give you a little bit of background of the property I'm doing. It's a personal residence, so I'm getting two point nine percent on a thirty year, <laughs> and uh, like it's it's hard to understand how yeah you know, there's tons of math involved and understand how good of a deal that is. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any, if anybody wants to get into real estate now, prices are a little bit high, but these are some crazy low rates. And 10 years from now, you want to be have something that's locked. So you're paying with future dollars that are worth less. Mm -hmm. Dollars in the future are worth far less mm -hmm. and you're locking in at 2.9% and in house hack. That is also another one. House hack. Look into house hacking. Uh, I'm doing it right now, even though I could do not, I don't have to do it, but like, why not? Why not buy a house with a guest house? Why not buy a house with a pool house that you convert into a guest house? Why not have that guy pay for your mortgage and put a fence up and tell him not to come peeking over your property? Live there for free. 
Wow. Yeah. And what you just said about uh, uh, tomorrow's dollars, it's going to be worth less than today's dollars. That was one of the, that's, that's still some of the hardest stuff I have trying to explain that to uh, my family and friends about purchasing power. <laughs> I, try, I try that. And um, I, what I normally do, I have a silver dollar that's, uh, that I, I keep and I try to show them the, the different purchasing power. But I just can't get them to, to realize that. Uh, me right now, I uh, when I first got into business, I went out and I, I, I got a bunch of vehicles and stuff. And I, 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 I was doing uh, other people time, other people money. And I, I said, okay, I, I get all these new vehicles and I put technicians in them and they'll be paying for the vehicles and I'll be getting the money from them. And all of a sudden we, the housing bubble burst and my delivery business went under and, and then the, the electrical contracting business I had, that slowed down and people wasn't paying me for the work I had. And I had about eight brand new cars and I was like, good Lord, I got to now become a huge car salesman. So I started selling cars and after that, I just stayed away from debt. I said, no more am I going to be going out here buying brand new cars and stuff. I can't pay cash for it. Uh, I'm not going to do it. And I'm still a little, I'm still a little shook up about uh, getting uh, going in, going into debt. And it, it scared my wife too. So both of us right now still look gun shy about debt. Yeah, I mean, you can become wealthy either way. As long as you are getting into debt that someone else is paying for, it's fine. Uh -huh. And and on an asset that's increasing in value, I wouldn't do it in vehicles. I mean, right. I can definitely see why you would at some points, but as far as real estate goes, don't get in over your head. Mm -hmm. Don't have it. Don't be a hundred percent out there and mortgage to the hilt and just you know. I sleep a lot better at night knowing if one of my renters doesn't pay, it's no problem. If yeah. four of my renters doesn't pay, it doesn't problem. If all my renters don't pay for six months it's just barely starting to become a real problem. <laughs> but if I had everything mortgaged out to the hilt, mm -hmm. if one of my renters don't pay, it becomes a problem. I got to go to work to pay mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. It's no, none of the other renters are combining the money and getting it like, no, you, you want to make sure you're not too spread out. Yeah. Leverage, uh, what's the saying? Uh, leverage can kill you. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. And uh, right. What well, getting me now, I wish I had bought my lumber <laughs> before the, the lumber now is killing me, killing my budget. So uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe I'll slow down, let the prices come back. And before I go to the next house, um, I got one of them I'm finishing. But if the prices don't come down, I might have to wait until the, until the lumber prices come back down. Yeah, that treated deck we built on that trailer, the, it was a 10 by 20. And on the back porch was just a little little platform and then stairs down that was nearly two thousand dollars in lumber wow a four by four eight foot is eighteen dollars <laughs> yeah I, uh, I just um uh, i was gonna do a big deck on the back but i broke it down we're gonna we're gonna do a six by six um so yeah. those, uh, those uh those 12 foot two by six we're gonna cut them in <laughs> cut them in half now to get the prices back down yeah, it makes all the rest of your real estate more worthwhile. You know, those, those, those timbers still exist inside your real estate now. People's price that they're going to be paying to build new is going to dramatically go up. and will make existing properties more valuable. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Now, what are you going to do with your flip, flipping business? Are you just going to let it go? Or are you just going to do a flipping here and there? I might still flip a little bit. It's definitely not going to be my uh, main source anymore. It's going to be more of like a side hobby when I get spare time, the house I'm moving into has no, uh, no shop for me. So I'm going to build a little lean to and, uh, put a 220 out there and a water out there. And I might do a couple on the side, but mm -hmm. honestly, like I'm at the point in my life where I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to, I want to travel and enjoy my youth a little bit. Every year my youth is uh, wearing out. My knees are getting worse. Uh, I just want to enjoy life a little bit more, even if I'm just, you know, I'm semi-retiring and, you know, working half the year and traveling the other half a year or just slowing down. That is great. That is great. Um, I'm going to read a couple of the comments and uh, I'm not going to hold you too long. Uh, my wife, done, you might have heard her call. I told her I was going to be off in an hour. So I think they uh, might have something else surprise for me. Um, somebody asked, uh, are you a member of any uh, real estate masterminds? Yes. Okay. I'm on, uh, I, well, a mastermind. I, I took a course from Real Estate Roundup. 
uh, uh -huh. for wholesaling. Uh, I don't wholesale. I am a buy and holder, but I use their techniques to find inexpensive properties and buy them. So mm -hmm. I, I took that course to learn how they find the, I've had wholesalers bring me stuff. I was like, how'd you find this great deal? And they're like <laughs> a bunch of people recommended uh, real estate roundup. I took the course and uh, it's their tricks are, uh, I don't want to call them tricks or techniques uh -huh. are, are really interesting and simple. It's like pretty much you find a house that's in need of work or the grass is growing up. You get in touch with the owner and you make them an offer. See if so they're you, willing you, you to do sell. A lot of, you do a lot of driving for real estate. I make a driving for, now I've only done this recently. I used to, I just uh, would stalk the MLS and I would look for a good deal on there and be the first one to make the offer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's back when things were easier to come across. But mm -hmm. now, yeah, I drive for real estate. I make a master list of mm -hmm. everything. And then I skip trace and I call the entire list, but I do it for a different reason. A lot of guys that do that are wholesaling. Mm -hmm. I do it when I'm ready to buy now. So I'll, I'll make those calls. The, the four houses we bought last year were all from that list. Okay. That's, that's great. I also am part of uh, Graham Stephan's uh, mastermind group right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, your father, did your father teach you about finances uh, and entrepreneurship? He did. He was in uh, Amway. You know, oh, okay, yeah, Elway, yeah. yeah. Went Everybody was in Elway at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he was listening to those tapes all the time, and they influenced me a lot. Uh, how to influence and influence people. Uh, there was a bunch of the sales tapes that he used to listen to. That I, you know, at the time I was probably eight to twelve when he was doing all that, and I know those tapes sunk deep into my brain and and encouraged me to be an entrepreneur as well. Okay. Now, now are you the only sibling, or you have any brothers and sisters? I got two other brothers, my little brother, and we're partners. And uh, the four properties I did in one year, we partnered on because they need a lot of work. So he's partners on those four with me, and he's partners on the uh, moving company. So whenever we move somebody, the two man crew, it's me and him. Uh -huh. So we're, we're splitting that hundred dollars per hour down the mill. Oh wow! Okay, so both of y'all entrepreneurs. We are. He has a carpet cleaning company that uh, has really grown a lot in two years. He's, uh, he's, he's doing very well at it. Wow. Now, this is stuff I, I'm interested in. Now, I, with that, uh, did he ever go work another job? No. Ever worked, he never worked a job either. How about no. your other sibling? Uh, Ro, he works with my dad in the uh, cabin rental business. And uh, he does a lot of online stuff that I don't really understand with building websites <laughs> and stuff like that. He, 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 he works for himself too, entrepreneur? He works for himself, yeah. He works for himself. My mom's a school teacher. She just retired this year. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was entrepreneur all the way through. See, um, a lot of us are first-generation entrepreneurs. And um, uh, I'm starting to see the younger kids are looking at their parents and they're listening to uh, the stuff that they're listening to. Like you say, you listen to your the tapes and stuff, your dad and, and all that. And I'm amazed at how many of these young kids now are, are gravitating towards entrepreneurship. So uh, how about your other siblings? Did they go to college or anything or? No, honestly, like uh, I hate to put college down, but my dad pushed hard for us not to do that. And I'm glad at the time I didn't understand why he would put down the idea of college and push entrepreneurship. But now that I look back, it's the best thing he could have ever done for me because when you're, when you're with your people that your age, when you're younger, uh -huh. school age kids, that's all you know is you right. need to graduate from high school and you better go to college or you're going to be a loser. And that's a hard one. My dad was really the only one that was always saying, don't do that. You, you need, I, I went to college. It was a complete waste of time. Here's where you make money doing this. Start your own business. Nobody's going to ask you for a college degree when you start your own business. So he was a big influence as far as uh, not moving towards the usual college path. I, I honestly think the path towards uh, what you're doing, I think, is amazing, teaching people how to do the appliance business, mm -hmm. but skill trade. Uh -huh. that, that, that You can make so much money doing that and be your own boss doing that. Why would you want to go to college and get a good J-O-B? Why? <laughs> hey, all that money to just start off with a better paying job that's that's crazy you know now i think now, i think um when i used to have a job 
I cannot fathom getting up early in the morning, going to go set at somebody's office all day long. Cause uh, man, that, that would just drive me crazy. Because I get to I get to do what I like to do. <laughs> uh, you no, know, sometimes I have to do what needs to be done, but I, I get to choose my schedule and, and I get to work at the like I say, uh, appliances. I loved it. I love appliances. But um, I'm getting to a point now where I'm I'm um, I'm starting to dabble more into real estate, and I'm starting to see what you see with that uh, passive income. So I, I can be anywhere and not get my rent check, and don't have don't have to be don't have to be uh, no hands on. Uh, where now I'm starting to uh, burn out a little bit, and I want to make a little bit of a change. But I can't see myself going out working for nobody, and for your father to instill that into y'all that early and get y'all into the uh, entrepreneurship that is that is just wonderful. Now, how about his father? Was his father an entrepreneur also? Uh, he did uh, quite a bit. He was also, my grandfather retired from the post office. My dad was a postmaster for a little while too. I don't remember a lot about it. I was fairly young <laughs> when he was doing that. Uh -huh. And he got out when I was probably eight or 10 or so and started doing the medical equipment mm -hmm. company. And uh, so I don't remember a whole lot about the post office when he was there. I know he always talked about how much he hated being behind the desk and punching the time clock and he'd mm -hmm. always use those stories and never do what I did. I wasted my time, <laughs> uh -huh. but it, it's, it's one of those things that uh, you look back and you don't realize the important lessons your parents taught you. Right. Yeah. Uh, what about your grandfather? You know, did he do anything entrepreneurship? Yeah. He has a uh, alarm system business that he did and he, he, he did, which was repeat customers back when the alarm system business was uh -huh. you paid a monthly fee every single uh -huh. month. Now it's also cheap. It's like, I, I got a uh, ring. It's a hundred dollars a year. <laughs> like, that uh -huh. business kind of got wiped out with that, uh -huh. but uh, he was doing that for a very long time. He was a supervisor uh, in Natchez for a long time. And that was all interesting. He did all kinds of stuff when he retired from the post office. He, he had a lot of fun. It's one of those things that, but also when you see someone retire, you always have that vision of they're not supposed to do anything. My grandfather retired. He just took off doing stuff. <laughs> now I'm going to go a little further. How about your great grandfather? Do you know if he done anything with entrepreneurship? I don't think so. I, I don't okay. believe so. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, my grandfather on my uh, mom's side is in uh, Detroit, Michigan, uh, but he does, uh, well, I will say he does. Um, he hauls off houses, teardowns, things like that. Uh -huh. So yeah, he definitely is into it. And my, my uncle is also an entrepreneur up there. So yeah, there's a lot of relatives that also do it as well. Wow. <laughs> you, you said you collect rent. Have you started, have you discovered Cozy yet? No, what's cozy? Uh, rent collecting website. It's free for you, free for the tenant. Um, they get charged if they use a credit card. So, you know, tell them not to do that. But it's, uh, yeah. I've started making it. They do direct, they, they do bank draft? Yep, bank draft. Mm -hmm. But I started putting in my lease that they have to do it. And it's mm -hmm. so convenient. Automatic late fees. You don't have mm -hmm. to do that awkward phone call. Where's the rent? That, like you know when the rent comes in it's not in the mail like ever since i started it i i did i was leery of it first but i actually really like it now and i put all my leases if you aren't willing to get it on cozy you ain't renting from me yeah with, with my renters the houses i'm doing now i'm stepping them up making them a little better the ones i have <laughs> right now those are the ones i asked them about bank about uh, i asked them where their bank and they said their front pocket so so those are the uh, ones yeah, it, it sucks. Well, I, I use a property management company. Yeah, so. I still have those. I have an older couple that's that way, and I give them slips from my bank, mm -hmm. and I make them take a picture of it and send it to me, mm -hmm. the receipt. That way we all know when you paid kind of thing. <laughs> that way, But uh -huh. I only do that with a couple of my older tenants, the same way you're talking about the ones that don't yeah. want to have all the conspiracy theories about bank accounts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, But uh, the ones I'm doing now – I'm actually, I'm actually making them nicer. I'm going to actually up the rent on it also uh, to go to the ones where I can do something a little bit more automated and for it make it easier in the future if, if something was to happen to me for my wife and kids to be able to, uh, to manage it uh, versus going out there and, you know, I wouldn't want them to go out there to the ones I got right now to pick up. That's how it kind of works though. Like when I first started off, I started off with what I could start off with, uh -huh. you know, same thing you're talking about properties where I wouldn't want to send my wife out to in the middle right. of the night. But uh, after a little while, you, you, you have to, it's like paying your dues. You start uh -huh. off with those and you're working your way up and all of a sudden you're into houses that, you know, 
are, are nice and there's nothing you, you live in the neighborhood. This is like the really nice neighborhoods and you're getting rentals in that's, you don't want to go too high, mm. but you kind of got to take your steps. So yeah, yeah. You got to start off with those. Mm. Man, this has been great, Gabe. I, I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, helping us with this knowledge that, uh, that you have. Um, so, uh, so now you're going to transition over to real estate more uh, you going to do anything with stocks or anything or? I do option trading. I, I, do you know about uh, covered calls? You know what those are? Uh, no, I don't do anything with stocks. I do a little bit. I'm just learning now. Uh, but covered calls, so let's say you own 100 stock mm -hmm. and now you can sell an option on it. Mm -hmm. And that's selling covered calls. So mm -hmm. when you ever hear about option trading, people are usually on the other end, they're buying calls mm -hmm. or buying the options mm -hmm. you want to be selling the difference is my friend said puts it this way people that buy options are like going to the casino people that yeah. sell options are like being the casino <laughs> okay it's much better my the worst case scenario you know let's say uh you can do it with a car let's say you have a car and i say all right you have that car you own it oh man will you sell me that car for a thousand dollars and you say, ah, I think it might be worth $1,100 next week, but I bought it for 900. So yeah. Yeah. And you're hoping that it will stay right around there. And I say, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hundred dollars. If you sell it to me for $1,100, but give me 30 days and I'll see if that car is going to be worth more. And you say, okay, okay, I'll do that. You take the hundred dollars, 30 days goes by. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The car is only worth one thousand and ninety-eight dollars. It's not worth eleven $1 hundred. Mm -hmm. You know what happens? You, you keep, keep the keep car, the and you keep the car, and you yeah, say, so "Hey, you can you sell it again." again. <laughs> yeah. And worst case, let's say it's worth twelve hundred dollars. Uh -huh. Guess what happens? You get to sell it for eleven $1 hundred dollars, and you keep that hundred dollar bill. The worst case wasn't so bad. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh wow. Ah. I got, I, I'm not quite ready to go to the stock market though yet. I, I still got, uh, I'm going to finish mastering the real estate and finish with my business. And then I go into the stock market. I, I still Man, don't you, quite you should look at, look at the Graham Stephan mentorship group. Graham uh, I'm Steph in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Graham Stephan mentorship group. You can just join by the month. Just, you know, do it for a little while. You can learn a whole lot. I've learned so much about option trading there. And, and YouTube building, channel building. My channel's grown a whole lot just from advice from those guys. Okay. I'm definitely going to check that out, too. You gave me a lot of stuff, man. I appreciate this. I appreciate this show. Yeah, man. this is fun, man. You, anytime you let me know, I, I, you're never going to make me feel bad. If you need somebody to come on the show and talk about real estate, washers and dryers, you, I'm the guy. <laughs> I love talking about that stuff. Yeah, matter of fact, you said Natchez, my, uh, my good friend. He's out there, out near there. Uh, in Mississippi, so I, I'm gonna be going out there visiting him, and uh, soon as uh, probably beginning of the year, so I might come by and, and check you out. Right, How far? Yeah, you, not that far from Natchez. Yeah, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah, I, I might swing by and, and check. Yeah, you it'll out. probably be on your way. Yeah, Natchez is uh, west of me, so it'll probably okay. be on your way. Okay. All right. Um, once again, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, I want to thank everybody who joined us tonight. Uh, just showing you what you can do from appliance, uh, appliance repair business. Gabe, he flipped appliances to the point now where he's uh, became a real estate mogul now. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's more than one ways you can get into this business and to make a living. And um, like I say, the skilled trades, appliance repair, entrepreneurship uh, is, I think, is the way to go. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you again, Gabe. Um, I'll be back on Thursday. And uh, thank you all for joining.